All right, boys and girls, I'm Ben Dominich, and we are back with another edition of the Ben Dominich Podcast, brought to you by Fox News. You can check out all of our podcasts at foxnewspodcasts.com. You can also rate and review this one, I hope you will, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also subscribe to my daily newsletter, The Transom, at thetransom.org. You can check that out. I've now moved over to Substack uh, for uh, those uh, daily email newsletter offerings. And today we are going to be discussing uh, the issue of courage with one of my favorite authors, Ryan Holiday. I've talked to him about a number of his books. They're they're really interesting things, especially because of his focus on stoicism in an era in which uh, stoicism seems to be in short supply. His latest book is Courage is Calling, Fortune Favors the Brave. Uh, it's part of a series of books that he is starting up uh, concerning the four cardinal virtues. Ryan and I talked about a number of different aspects of courage, examples of it through history, some of the moral questions involved in the context of the pandemic, uh, and his perspective perspective as someone who comes from the world of corporate America, but has now uh, been experiencing the pandemic in the context of living near Austin in Texas. Ryan Holiday, coming up next. Ryan Holiday, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You have been someone who focused on stoicism in previous writings, and now you've taken up uh, these uh, a series of books that are going to be on these four different cardinal virtues. Uh, tell me a little bit about why you chose to do that, uh, and particularly uh, what it meant for you to spend so much time writing about each of them uh, in a moment in you know American history and world history uh, where you know relatively few people are interested in looking back at these past types of virtues and, and applying them to uh, our lives today. Well, I'm always fascinated when like different philosophical schools or or maybe people of, of different persuasions like agree on something, and uh, obviously I knew you know the sort of stoic virtues of courage, temperance, justice, and wisdom, and I was reading C.S. Lewis's *Mere Christianity* as this great series on the, on the cardinal virtues, um, and I had always thought. Uh, that Cardinal uh, had some religious connotation. Um, And it wasn't until I was reading his very fascinating explanation um, that I was informed that Cardinal comes from the Latin word cardos, which just means hinge. So the idea is that these are sort of four pivotal uh, virtues that the good life depends on. And I loved that Stoicism and Christianity, enemies uh, in ancient Rome for sure, we're actually in agreement on these sort of core ideas. And I think when you look at today's world, um, a lot of people are adrift. A lot of people are struggling precisely because they don't have sort of a core set of values or a code. Um, And, and so I, as I was thinking about what I wanted to write about next, um, it, it really struck me that this sort of core overlap between these ideas would be really interesting and of course, courage being of the virtues, perhaps the in the shortest supply these days. Mm-hmm. I I have to ask before we go any further: Are you going to spend three hundred pages on temperance? <laughs> so that that is the book I am in the middle of right now, <laughs> and uh, I found this on. I did a book on ego several years ago, and mm-hmm. that actually began as a book about humility. And what I quickly realized is that you can't write three hundred pages about humility because it's really boring and not particularly inspiring even though we all admit that it's very important. Mm -hmm. So as I've been thinking about temperance, I have pivoted towards uh, self-discipline, which I think is the closer sort of stoic interpretation of the idea. You know, Mm -hmm. temperance seems like this kind of middle of the road, moderation in all things, like what's the right amount? And and that's certainly an element of temperance. But, you know, when I I think of... uh, that idea, that virtue, I think about it more of the sort of stoic idea of restraint and self-control and, uh, you know, uh, discipline. And so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to not make it a boring book about temperance. I'm going to make it about uh, self-discipline. 
I was thinking of the scene from Futurama where they're dealing with the planet of neutrals uh, and uh, the leader of the planet learns that they're about to be blown up. And his response is, tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> so so there is kind of a, a grayness to that that would probably not be uh, the, the subject of a, a good uh, 300 page book. But then, you know, you've you've found a way to turn a lot of these different topics into uh, you know, really fleshed out an interesting uh, storytelling about different examples through history. Courage, obviously, being one uh, where I think the examples abound and where you found uh, many of them and, and highlighted different aspects of it. It's the most demonstrable of the virtues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the thing that I think it has to be a question, and I'm sh that I'm sure you've run into uh, before me asking it, is... Talk to me about how courage exists as a virtue if separated from the aspect about which one is being courageous. Well, so it, it, essentially, you know, imagine, you know, if, if you if you want to take an, an image of courage of, uh, you know, from from the pantheon of world experience, I think that there were a lot of people who would probably pick you know, the images of, uh, you know, the, the man standing in front of the tanks in Tiananmen Square. Mm -hmm. And and that is, you know, of course, an incredibly moving and, and courageous image. Um, but part of that, of course, is the cause for which he's standing there. You don't know why he's doing it. You don't know the, the motivation involved. And, you know, if imagine a situation in which one is being courageous on behalf of a goal that is ultimately not virtuous, um, not uh, designed to increase human freedom, you know, not in, in favor of, uh, of, you know, of the betterment of, of man, uh, but is instead courage toward a goal uh, that we might find reprehensible. Um, you know, I think, I think a perfect example of this, you know, sort of in, in uh, the American experience would be you talk about the courage of, of, of U.S. Grant. Um, there are many Southerners who would say that, you know, Stonewall Jackson was courageous. Yes. Jeb Stewart was courageous. You know, Robert E. Lee was courageous. You know, what, how do you kind of think about courage as being not just, uh, you know, standing up for something, but standing up for the right thing? It, it, the virtues are inseparable, and it's really important that you bring this up because courage in the pursuit of an unjust aim, it might be courageous, but it's not, it's not virtuous. There's a, a Lord Byron quote that I love that I think captures perfectly what you're saying about the Civil War. I mean, imagine a Robert E. Lee, you know, he falls down on his knees and he's like, do I choose my state or my country? Imagine how agonizing that decision was. And then imagine being under fire, just stepping foot on a Civil War battlefield that obviously that took courage. Uh, but Lord Byron says, tis the cause makes all that hallows or degrades courage in its fall. And so to fight for the worst cause that's probably ever existed uh, is, uh, you know, um, not what we're talking about when we're talking about courage. I think, you know, in today's world and sort of thrill-seeking world, we might think, oh, it's courageous. You know, I love skydiving. Um, and certainly that's not something I would do uh, because I don't enjoy uh, you know, being terrified. Um, <laughs> but but I, I think I think we we understand that there's a distinction between, you know, jumping out of an airplane on your birthday and jumping behind enemy lines uh, at Normandy. Uh, th there's there's sort of courage as a trick, you know, courage as a pursuit. And then there is the courage of like really putting it all on the line and and what that line is is so important. I um, I do tell a story in the book that, that you probably, uh, I know we, we've shared a fascination with this. I think about the editors of Gawker who quit on principle mm -hmm. uh, when management unpublished a story where they'd outed a, a gay executive at Condé Nast. Now, to quit your job on principle is a courageous, scary thing to do. And very few people would do that. But the principle that they were defending uh, was totally indefensible, and they never should have put themselves in that position to begin with. So mm -hmm. as we think about like what we're willing to risk or to bet or, or to, to, to sort of stand on, you know, the validity and the 
the the sincerity of that cause really does matter. 